Hi everybody, it's 214 React here, and today we are looking at 3D Mark Solar Bay Extreme, which was released by 3D Mark on August 21st. This is a benchmark that is designed for mobile devices and lightweight computers. Now, the previous version used ray tracing, but this version has an increased ray tracing workload with additional implementations, such as specular reflections for all surfaces and glass reflections, as well as ray traced soft shadows for directional light. They've turned up the scene heaviness with new ray tracing techniques, but they've also expanded the scene with an additional assembly bay where a rival team is competing to build their solar array faster so it's also expanded the scene as well as adding in extra ray tracing tech and if we look on the ul website at their benchmark details we can look at the details of the original solar bay here this is the vulcan 1.1 api and is meant for smartphones tablets game handhelds and notebook pcs and is also compatible with apple's metal api that so runs for one minute it's designed to mirror a mobile game where the workload is short bursts of activity and instead of showing a single score, the main result from the stress test is a chart that shows you how the device's performance changed during the test to help you understand how the device manages performance and heat during heavy use. So if we go down to the engine details here for the original Solar Bay, you see that the rendering, including scene update, visibility evaluation, and command recording is done with multiple CPU threads using one thread per available logical CPU core. The purpose is to reduce the CPU load by utilizing multiple cores. A bit of detail on ray tracing there. It's really cool that ray tracing can actually run on mobile devices now. So here we go into the graphical features themselves. So the ray tracing used to handle the reflections in the reflective panels and the floor at the beginning of the benchmark. As the benchmark progresses and more panels are added, the ray tracing workload increases over the three sections, ending at a workload similar to 3D Mark Port Royale. Particles are simulated on the GPU using compute shaders and they are self-illuminated. They are rendered at the same time with transparent geometries using the same order independent technique. Geometry rendering is done by using the G buffer and PBR and it uses a deferred rendering pass for subsequent rendering effects and non-ray trace reflections use cube maps. There's weight blended order independent transparency for transparent objects which gives a good approximation of real transparency in a scene. Geometry shaders and tessellation are not used in the benchmark. It uses a TAA, so that's temporal anti-aliasing, and it uses XEGTAO which is a ambient occlusion technique suitable for low power devices. And there's more information on the GitHub page here for that, which is now actually discontinued as of April 22nd, 2024. But you can go there and look at how XEGTAO worked. I think we've looked at it in a previous video when looking at the benchmarks on 3D Mark. So I'll put that link in the description as well. Also uses Bloom, Volumetric Lighting, and Depth of Field. So that was the original Solar Bay. Let's give that a look now and see how it runs and how it looks on my RTX 3060 with the Ryzen 5000 series. So this is the original one, and there's very limited options here. You can only choose the rendering device and display, and the custom run basically just and lets you enable async compute, full screen, or loop, as well as the resolution, which will leave it default. So there's not really much else to customize here. And looking back through my videos, I realized I haven't actually done a video on Solar Base. This is going to be the first time running it. And interestingly, looking at Steam here, it looks like it was released on 15th of August 2023. So I guess it was just one of those benchmarks that I didn't get around to doing a video on. So here we are. Let's uh, run. There's also an option to run a stress test as well. So this is running at 70 frames a second, pretty much. Really nice ray tracing there. I'd expect it to run at a higher frame rate, given that it's meant for lightweight devices. But then this is just a 3060 at 1080p. It seems really consistently at 70 FPS. I wonder if that's the max FPS this can hit. Because it doesn't seem to be going above 70 at all. Oh, that looks good. You can tell where the main ray tracing workload is, though. It's clearly on the panels themselves. And here come the results. This is a very, very short benchmark. So, 18,589. 70, 74, 71, 65. No, it's not locked to 70. That's the overall monitoring overall, the whole thing. Now, interestingly, my score is there, but the average score for this hardware is way up here. So, for some reason, it seems like I'm way down on the performance here for what my hardware should be doing, which is interesting. It's definitely running on the 3060. There's the detailed monitoring section one 
one. There we go, showing the frame rate, section two and section three. See, so yeah, it dials up the level of ray tracing as you go across. You see the temperature there going up. GPU load, CPU load. The GPU load wasn't hitting 100%. Hovering about 70, CPU usage 24, maxing out about 54%. You can see the frequencies, a little dip there on the CPU frequency. Again, the nice, lovely charts that uh, 3D Mark always spits out, very satisfying. And yeah, it gives you a nice uh, sense of the performance over the course of the benchmark. So this would be even more useful for even lighter weight or mobile systems where heat is a bit more of a issue because yeah, if you look at this temperature, CPU 72, GPU 60, probably about normal for these sort of use cases and it stays about the same. Whereas for a mobile device, you're more at risk of uh, heat being an issue. It does say, yeah, anti-aliasing settings modified by NVIDIA driver. So the result is invalid, but that still shouldn't cause a really low score there. So it looks like I should be about 36,000. Yeah, average. What I'm going to do is quickly run another benchmark and see how that compares to see if anything weird's going on. So yeah, I just did a still nomad run here. My score is 1,527 and the average is 1,878. So yeah, a little bit lower on the scores there. I'm not sure why, but not as much of a gap as we're seeing on Solar Bay. So that was the original Solar Bay, which was never updated past the launch version to sat at 1.0. So now let's have a look at Solar Bay Extreme. This one runs at a similar resolution, uses DirectX 12 or Vulkan 1.1 or Metal for iOS. You can flick between DirectX 12 or Vulkan. So we'll have a look at the performance differences between the two and users of the enterprise version of 3d mark can switch between ray tracing pipeline and ray query some information here on arm.com and to control ray traversal launch rays vulcan offers two options the ray tracing pipeline which is an opaque and more driver managed approach it uses a new set of shader stages to control ray traversal you can use a ray generation shader to define rays and set the origin and direction if it intersects geometry it will call the intersection shader if it intersects non-opaque geometry it will call any hit shader to decide if the hit should be considered and once it's complete if the ray does not hit anything in the scene you can call the mist shader a common use case of a mist shader is to sample an environment map containing the sky if instead you have a confirmed hit the gpu invokes our closest hit shader in this shader you can then determine what date you need from the object they intersected and return that to the shader you generate the ray you go through the structure traversal any hit or intersection hit closest hit or miss a ray query allows you to use ray tracing from the existing shader stages you launch rays from the compute or fragment shader it's also possible to launch rays from other stages such as vertex or even ray generation and that makes it easy to add ray tracing to existing shaders it means you need to manage the ray traversal in the shader you define the ray then you can start ray traversal and then again it does the checks on hits and non-opaque geometry so a ray query proceed Handle result, acceleration structure traversal, confirm, hit, or terminate, handle result. So I think if you're doing a big, big ray trace scene and fully ray traced, you want to just use ray tracing pipeline because most of it's boilerplate and you can just call the ray generation functions and it's all handled for you in the drivers and the GPU. But if you're doing something a little bit more simple and with an existing shader pipeline, ray query is better because it can integrate with uh, fragment and compute shaders, but you have to handle a lot of the ray tracing yourself. Uh, within those shaders so it's kind of a trade-off between performance ease of use and the level of detail you're rendering in a scene and the amount of ray tracing you want to put into that scene so it would be interesting to flick between ray tracing pipeline and ray query on solar bay extreme and see what the differences are but you need enterprise version for 3d mark and i don't have that so solar bay extreme runs for one minute as well again it mirrors a mobile game where the workload is short bursts of activity you can also run a longer session which will run for 20 minutes in a loop and here's where we look at the system requirements so it needs android 12 6 gigs of ram vulcan 1.1 ios 18 6 gigs of ram iphone 11 or 9th generation ipad dual core with sss e3 support directx 12 4 gigabytes of vram it has an apple silicon m series as well as some detailed vulcan requirements here so if we look at the system requirements for the original solar bay really similar but less vram needed on the windows side also need 1.65 gigs on the original solar bay and on the new one only requires 300 megabytes of space maybe that's because a lot of the assets are in 
installed with the original solar bay i don't know i don't know how that's a less space maybe there's more processing done and less stuff baked in as the ray tracing may handle a lot more of the the detail that's baked in on the original solar bay and some details on how the score is produced here the older solar bay had sub scores showing the average fps for each benchmark section but this one just produces an overall score based on the fps achieved throughout the run and there is only one benchmark section with a consistent load so they have actually changed it just a little bit from the original solar bay and made it a more of a consistent test across the entire one minute of rendering you can see the stage scores here on the original solar bay so that's an interesting change they've made there now let's get into the meat of it with the solar bay extreme engine based on the deferred rendering engine used in the original solar bay again sports directx 12 vulcan and metal it uses the same cpu threading so it supports all race tracing features used in the original solar bay and adds new ones with increased total per frame load by two to five times the ray trace reflections volumetric lighting particles and post-processing effects it adds in ray trace specular reflections for rough surfaces transparent objects with full resolution ray traced glass reflections and ray traced soft shadows for directional light and it's meant to be consistent throughout the scene there's no sections like in the original it uses the ray query mode on devices running android ios and mac os and the pipeline mode for devices running windows but on the enterprise version you can switch between ray query and pipeline particles are simulated on the gpus and compute shaders self-illuminated and uses the same techniques as the original solar bay geometry rendering is exactly the same as solar bay same rendering of pbr the only difference i can see here is that all reflections is solar bay extreme ray traced unlike in solar bay cube maps are only used for secondary bounce reflections so if we look at the original solar bay here the non-ray trace reflections are based on cube maps so not everything used ray tracing for reflections whereas in extreme this one uses an upgraded cross-platform graphics engine all reflections are ray traced cube maps are just for second bounces transparency objects are rendered in the same way as the original solar bay again it uses taa xe gtao blue volumetric lighting and depth of field just like the original all the ray tracing is reflections it's not used for ao or anything like that not much details on the directional light for the soft shadows but i don't believe the original solar bay used ray tracing for the shadows so this one should have better looking shadows as well as reflections and a lot more reflections in the scene as well so let's fire it up and check out solar bay extreme a lot more options you can choose between apis direct x12 or vulcan pretty much the same options on on the custom run so what we're going to do is going to run it in directx12 see how it performs and then we're going to give it a run in vulcan as well all right already you can just see a whole ton more reflections in the ground there the shadowing looks way better you can see all the increased uh geometry there from the extra solar bays being built in the background the reflections look a lot more detailed and a lot more rough as well. It's not just a straight, clean reflection. Oh, look at that. There's a bit of blurriness on those reflections there. Oh, those shadows look real good. Oh, I see the back of the solar panels have a bit more of a rough reflection, and the other side has a clean reflection. Oh, look at those nice uh, reflections in the floor there. So yeah, that has a much better look to it, especially with the more rough reflections in the ground and in the ceiling and stuff like that. And the shadows look a lot better as well. And the extra solar bays being built in the background give a lot more depth to it. Weirdly running quite slow on my machine don't know why my score is 5700 and the average is 8200 i'm not going to look into why that's doing that now but it did run considerably worse 40 fps compared to the 70 fps of the prior one and again you've got a lot more basic monitoring here it's not split over the three sections anymore pretty similar on the temperature pretty similar on the oh no the gpu load is a lot more the cpu load seems to be a lot less and the gpu load is locked at 100 percent frequencies and the gpu temperatures are slightly higher quite a bit higher than they were on the normal solar bay just don't know why it's uh so far below the average now let's give it a run again but this time with vulcan see how it runs right here we go so the previous one ran at about 70 frames a second and this one's running at 26 27 frames a second so a lot less which is interesting looks pretty much the same 
Really nice reflections in that glass there. Now, I have noticed there was some blur on some of these robots, as well as the rougher reflections. Yeah, look at that robot there from the right. Loads of blur on it for some reason. That's odd. I don't think this uses DLSS or anything like that. So I don't know why that blur is happening. And I'm also not sure why the performance is so much worse on Vulcan. It's definitely running on the 3060. And here we are, yep, again, really low score for some reason, almost half, even worse performance in Vulcan than it was in DirectX 12. I don't know what is going on. I'm going to have to look into why my GPU is uh, not behaving in the way that it should be. Vulcan definitely using the 3060. Could be that these scores are based on a desktop 3060 and not taking into account the fact this is a mobile 3060 for a laptop. The interesting thing is the GPU load is way less on Vulcan. It was 100% on DX12. On Vulcan, it's like 60%. Similar temperatures, though. The CPU load seems a little bit more smooth. It was a bit higher at the beginning on DirectX 12. Frequency is pretty much standard. I wonder if there's a difference with Vulcan with the amount of cores that it can use and how it can deliver information and data to the GPU, and that's what's causing the frame rate to drop. I don't know. What I'm going to do is see if I can get the two solar bays to run side by side and see how they look. All right, so here we have the two side by side in NVIDIA iCat. See how well these run together. There we go. Very similar runs here with the extreme on the right and the original on the left. So you can see here if we scroll across you can see the extra detail added to the background and all the extra things in. Kind of desyncs here. They're not exactly the same step through benchmarks. But it does give you an idea of the different levels of reflections on the mirrors there, as well as the reflections that are a bit more coarse and rough. It's just pure clean reflections here, no transparency reflections. None of the rough reflections on the floor here, and you can see the shadowing just looks a lot better there. So there we go, that was a quick look at Solar Bay Extreme there with additional ray tracing. It's really, really nice, especially the shadows, the transparency, the reflections on the more rough surfaces looks really good as well. Just a bit strange that there's a bit of blur on some of these. And the performance isn't great on the 3060, but maybe that's just how a mobile 3060 handles it. So thanks for watching, leave a like, let me know what you think in the comments. Subscribe, there's a new video on graphics and video games every week. And I will see you in the next video.